Well, what do you know? It finally happened. ULA just lit up. Vulcan successfully launched Peregrine, but something went wrong. The space agency wants the privately owned landers to scope out the place before astronauts arrive while delivering NASA tech and science experiments as well as odds and ends for other customers. Astrobotics contract for the Peregrine lander $108 million US dollars. Now all the hope can be put on next month when SpaceX will provide the lift for a lander from Intuitive Machines. The Houston-based company is expected to use a SpaceX Falcon 9 to launch its uncrewed IM-1 mission from Cape Canaveral with the aim to land on February 22, a day before the ULA mission would land as planned, sparking something of a private space race. The first U.S. mission to put a lander on the moon in 50 years has been hit by a technical problem which could scalper the mission. The Peregrine Mission 1 aims to become the first U.S. spacecraft to land on the moon's surface since Apollo 17 in 1972. But the private company behind the launch says the craft has suffered an anomaly, which experts are now trying to soar out. The launch was textbook lifting American dreams of returning to the moon with a private company not NASA at the controls, but several hours into its journey the space startup Astrobotics signaled that the spacecraft was unable to point its solar panels at the sun and without power. The mission was in jeopardy. In a statement it said the team believes that the likely cause of the unstable sun pointing is a propulsion anomaly that if proven true threatens the ability of the spacecraft to soft land on the moon. If the anomaly can be corrected this could go on to be the first commercial lunar landing. It's being done on a shoestring but NASA said it was confident that bringing in private companies would drive innovation. Private rocket companies have already made it far cheaper and easier to put satellites in orbit. NASA now hopes that involving commercial enterprises will lead to the same revolution for lunar exploration. The UK's Open University helped build one of five NASA experiments on board an instrument for studying water molecules. In the moon's incredibly thin atmosphere, a commercial mission has brought a new way of working. There is a greater appetite for risk and that allows us to be more agile to do things more quickly to develop systems which are more adventurous, more bold because there's an understanding that. That's what we're doing. Astrobotic Technology is a space robotics firm that has been working on developing a lunar lander called Peregrine for 16 years. Peregrine is a small lightweight spacecraft that can carry up to 20 payloads or scientific instruments to the moon. The goal of Peregrine is to collect data about the lunar surface and environment and pave the way for future human missions to the moon. Peregrine was launched to space on Monday at 2.18 a.m. Eastern Time from Cape Canaveral, Florida aboard a new rocket called Vulcan. Vulcan is a powerful and reusable rocket that was developed by a joint venture of Boeing and Lockheed Martin, two of the biggest aerospace companies in the world. Vulcan is designed to compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which has been dominating the satellite launch market for the past few years. Vulcan's launch was a huge success and it placed Peregrine into orbit around the Earth with pinpoint accuracy. ULA, the company that operates Vulcan, was very happy with the performance of the rocket and said that it was ready to start launching more missions for the U.S. Space Force and other customers. Vulcan sells for at least $110 million per launch and has a backlog of some 70 missions booked already, but the trouble started after Peregrine separated from Vulcan and began its journey to the moon. Astrobotics said that there was a problem with Peregrine's propulsion system, which is the engine that controls the spacecraft's speed and direction. The propulsion system malfunctioned and prevented Peregrine from angling itself toward the sun for power. This caused the spacecraft's battery levels to drop and put the mission in jeopardy. Astrobotics engineers worked hard to regain control of Peregrine and managed to restore its power and communication. But the propulsion system issue also caused Peregrine to lose some of its propellant which is the fuel that it needs to reach the moon. And land softly. Without enough propellant, Peregrine cannot perform the maneuvers that it needs to enter the lunar orbit and descend to the surface. But, the situation is quite dire. Yesterday morning, the new Vulcan rocket made a smashing debut, launching from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida and performing flawlessly. After 50 minutes of flight, the rocket's upper stage deployed its primary payload, the Peregrine Lunar Lander, into a moonbound trajectory. United Launch Alliance declared complete success with its new rocket and Peregrine became the first American commercial lunar lander to launch on a mission to the moon. The success of ULA and NASA has received much praise. Congratulations and to Blue Origin too. 
SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk said in a tweet. Congrats to ULA launch on the first flight of Vulcan. Sadly, space is not as easy as we thought. Thus, it requires the utmost skill and patience. After the deployment of the spacecraft, its developer Pittsburgh-based Astrobotic also said its ground controllers had successfully established contact with Peregrine. People seemed well as the spacecraft entered a highly elliptical orbit that will bring it toward the moon in the coming weeks. Engineers checking out the robotic Peregrine moon lander ran into problems, keeping the spacecraft properly oriented, a potentially crippling issue for the first U.S. lunar lander. Astrobotic built avionics systems including the primary command and data handling units as well as the thermal propulsion and power controllers, all powered on and performed as expected. The Pittsburgh-based company reported. Unfortunately, an anomaly occurred, which prevented Astrobotic from achieving a stable sun-pointing orientation. The team is responding in real time as the situation unfolds and will be providing updates as data is obtained and analyzed. In a second update, the company said engineers believe the likely cause of the sun-pointing issue is a propulsion anomaly that, if proven true, threatens the ability of the spacecraft to soft land on the moon. Additionally, Astrobotic said the spacecraft battery is reaching operationally low levels. Commands were sent to reorient the Peregrine to improve solar power generation. But the spacecraft then entered a region of its orbit where communications were interrupted. After contact was restored, engineers confirmed the spacecraft's solar arrays were oriented toward the sun, which helped charge onboard batteries. It appears the failure within the propulsion system is causing a critical loss of propellant. The team is working to try and stabilize this loss, but given the situation, we have prioritized maximizing the science and data we can capture. We are currently assessing what alternative mission profiles may be feasible at this time, the company said. The Peregrine will need its main engine to control the spacecraft's descent down to the lunar surface. Based on additional information provided by the company, it appears that time is running out to fix the problem. Just before entering a known period of communication outage, the team developed and executed an improvised maneuver to reorient the solar panels toward the sun. Shortly after this maneuver, the spacecraft entered an expected period of communication loss. Later on, Astrobotic shared the first image of the Peregrine lander in space. The photograph showing the outer layers of insulation on the vehicle sprinkled. The distorted material was the first visual clue that aligns with our telemetry data, pointing to a propulsion system anomaly. The company said in a post on the social media platform X at 4.12 p.m. Eastern. It was not clear whether the company was still considering a potential path toward the moon or was working to map out an alternative destination for the lander. According to NASA's Deep Space Network website, Peregrine re-established communication with the controllers on Earth by around 11.30 a.m. Eastern. The communication then stopped again about 15 minutes later. Most recently, Astrobotic has given a new update. They said an ongoing propellant leak is causing the spacecraft's attitude control system, or ACS thrusters, to operate well beyond their expected life cycles to keep the lander from an uncontrollable tumble. If the thrusters can continue to operate, they believe the spacecraft could continue in a stable sun-pointing state for approximately four more hours based on current fuel consumption. Therefore, the current goal would be to get Peregrine as close to lunar distance as possible before it loses the ability to maintain its sun-pointing position and subsequently lose power. NASA is working with Astrobotic to determine the impact of the HSC's five science investigations aboard the company's Peregrine Mission 1 spacecraft. While it's too soon to understand the root cause, NASA is supporting Astrobotic and will assist in reviewing flight data, identifying the cause, and developing a plan forward. There are many challenges with spaceflight, and we're incredibly proud of the Astrobotic and NASA teams that have put us one step closer to a robotic return to the lunar surface as part of Artemis. This delivery service model is a first for the agency, and with something new, there is a higher risk, said Joel Kearns. Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration at NASA's Science Mission Directorate. NASA is committed to supporting our commercial vendors as they navigate the very difficult task of sending science and technology to the surface of the moon. And it seems luck was on their side initially. After Vulcan successfully deployed its payload into the planned orbit, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said in a statement on X, Congrats to ULA on the first flight of Vulcan. On board was the Astrobotic Peregrine Lander which is carrying five NASA payloads as part of our CLPS or CLP's launch to the moon. 
we are showing the power of American innovation and paving the way for future Artemis missions. Astrobotic also confirmed that their ground controllers successfully established communication with Peregrine. NASA's mission seemed well as the spacecraft entered a high elliptical orbit preparing to head to the moon in the coming weeks, with the expected arrival on February 23. However, the joy of NASA and astrobotics was short-lived as a setback unfolded. About six hours after liftoff, Astrobotic issued an update statement. Despite the craft's avionic systems, including the command and data handling main computer, as well as the thermal control system, propulsion and power systems, all powering up and functioning. As expected, an anomaly occurred. Unfortunately, an anomaly then occurred, which prevented Astrobotic from achieving a stable sun-pointing orientation, the company stated. The team is responding in real time as the situation unfolds and will be providing updates as more data is obtained and analyzed. Astrobotic did not immediately provide additional details about the anomaly, failure to maintain a sun-pointing orientation could deprive the spacecraft of the ability to generate power using solar panels. The first thing that we're going to do is rotate the spacecraft to make sure that it's pointed at the sun and then we're going to charge the batteries, make sure everything's correct. John Thornton, CEO of Astrobotics said in a January 5th interview about post-launch Peregrine activities. In a subsequent update about an hour later, the company said it concluded that the pointing problem is a propulsion anomaly that has proven true threatens the ability of the spacecraft to soft land on the moon. It said it developed an improvised maneuver to reorient the spacecraft towards the sun to recharge its batteries and was waiting for its next communications pass to determine if that maneuver worked. And in a thrilling third update, the company said it had confirmed that the maneuver was a success. Having reoriented the spacecraft towards the sun, so it could charge the battery. The Mission Anomaly Board continues to evaluate the data we're receiving and is assessing the status of what we believe to be the root of the anomaly, a failure within the propulsion system. The company stated about 10 hours after launch. But wait, there's more. In the finale fourth update, the company appeared to rule out the ability of the spacecraft to land on the moon. Unfortunately, it appears that the failure within the propulsion system is causing a critical loss of propellant, it stated. The team is working to try and stabilize this loss, but given the situation, we have prioritized to maximizing the science and data we can capture. Astrophotic added that it is assessing what alternative mission profiles may be feasible at this time, but did not elaborate on what those alternative missions might entail. Indeed, exploring space is far from easy and no one can say they know what's going to happen next. The landing, Thornton said in the pre-launch interview, was the biggest risk for the mission. We know we're headed into a gauntlet here, we know we're headed into very difficult territory, he said. At the end of the day, we need to get as much data as we can at every point through the mission so we can learn and get better as an industry. Following such a failure, Astrophotic will, like other space companies, pour over the data from the anomaly, however, an analyst. Using this data will take time and should impact its future launch timelines with NASA. The next Astrophotic lunar lander, Griffin, will launch on SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. The next clip's launch is another lunar lander, this time developed by Intuitive Machines. The Intuitive Machines' Nova Sea lander will launch on SpaceX's Falcon 9, and at the time of this recording, Astrophotic is waiting for communications to resume with Peregrine after an expected blackout.